Are you ready? No. Okay, so everybody, we're I'm uh, very like super excited to have Alice here. Alice was originally going to do a hangout with us. She lives in Fresno. She has five kids at home from ages nine to nine to uh, ten months. Nine to I don't ten know. months. There's five. Um, she is an adjunct professor at Cal State Fresno. Fresno. Yeah, work for community um, she, educators. she works for Q. She does a bunch of other things. She's like super rock star ninja tech teacher. And she's a former math teacher. Who's a math teacher? There's a connection there. Um, and she's very, very like about spreadsheets, making <laughs> spreadsheets accessible to the normal yeah, person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, making it like not, not I don't know, I'm an English teacher, I can't touch a spreadsheet. Alice is the solution for that. So um, she actually was kind of in town, and we got her to, to hang out with us in person. She's actually broadcasting this uh, live as we speak, I, I think. And delicious data. Hey, thank you. Go. Thanks. So to be clear, you don't you don't have to be a math teacher to to want to do data. I think it's really good for for any level. So I starting my presentation, I made a really good hook, and Mike Lawrence said I should include a cartoon. So. So I, oops, I gotta do this on the right computer. So I got one. For those of you who know Mike Lawrence, there's my cartoon, um, and he is probably better looking than maybe what we think here is Common Core. It's like, ah, it's scary. Um, but actually, Common Core I think is a, something I'm like, super excited about because it brings data to the table to all classrooms, not just math classrooms, but to the English classrooms and, and science and even art. Is ways that we can uh, bridge some of these areas. And so being comfortable with data and how we can assess it is. Uh, I think very important for students. So I stole some, thing off of, some things off of Catlin Tucker's website. You guys familiar with Catlin Tucker? Because I like worship her. She's so amazing. So she wrote a book, um, Common Core in the Blended Classroom. You can get it on Amazon. So I just went to her, her website to find some things on the Common Core. So I totally just copied and pasted and stole this from her. her text her. I'm like, I hope you don't mind, but I'm plagiarizing from you. And uh, so these are some things that you would see that we're looking for for the Common Core. And like, uh, that they can comprehend and critique, that students can locate and use evidence. Like, where do I locate evidence? I don't know. And here's the big one. Real world problems. I got my degree in math, and I don't think we use a real world problem in the whole thing. Like, I have no idea how you apply math to the real world. Uh, quadratic formula, good with that. Um, and then using technology, which is, of course, my specialty, but that's not what everyone feels really comfortable about. And I think that Google is one of my favorite, favorite tools, and it really does make not only technology accessible, but um, really exciting. That collaboration piece is my favorite part. So I do have links to, to Catlin's blog that I stole this off of, CatlinTucker.com. So uh, just some actual quotes from the Common Core. Like, we want to gather relevant information. We want to make inferences. We want to identify important quantities. Doesn't this feel scary, right? I want to use technological tools to explore and deepen understanding of concepts. Like, how in the heck am I going to do this? And I know what you're all thinking. Da, Alice. Fusion tables. Clearly. How did that not? Yeah. We all use fusion tables, right? So here's the beauty about fusion tables, is they are, like, wicked easy. Not only can our students do it, but we can do it. Like, anyone can do it, but it'll make you look really smart. Like, you're a total badass and that you are uh, a wizard with data, and the reality is it just kind of like generates the stuff for you. So I'm hoping that you'll get really excited, like, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to show people how they can do this, or how I can do this. And they're just like, wow, you're amazing. You're like, yeah, it's Google, whatever. So don't tell them that. So what do we have our students do? We want them to be able to look and find all this data, and I think this is probably about the scariest thing I can show you. How is this not even Halloween, right? They're just like, ah, oh, what the heck? You know, and if I were to go to the students and say, make some meaning out of this, what patterns do you see emerge? You know, I, I can see their eyes blazing over now, and, and even with, as an English teacher, which I'm not, my husband is, uh, like, what the heck do we do with that? So, but what if you change it to something like this? What does this mean? I don't know what it means. But visually, I can see this. I'm going to have students take a look. I'm um, looking for patterns. Like, why, why is math so big? Why is there, like, so many D? You can also see in here how the lines are fatter and skinnier. It's graphing relationships. So now I'm looking more at what's going on instead of just looking at some hard numbers. It's kind of a same graph, but uh, different data where you're looking at these network connections. 
maps. Who doesn't like maps? You know what would be really fun is to have to graph every single one of those because that would take up a lot of class time and I love to waste class time. Or having some sort of index card of these. You know, normally on that data sheet where it's in rows, what if I can just organize it all into like little index cards? Doesn't that make it a little bit easier to process? Looks a little prettier. We can do some things with that. Um, so just think about a student project that you could do. So I'm assuming that all of you are a little bit familiar with Google Forms and spreadsheets. And so just kind of building off of that is I like to have students gather information using the Google Form. So what's really exciting about that is it's totally customizable. So whatever your guiding question is, what is it you're doing? I mean, even if it's make best, what kind of things about the best do you want to know? And each student can be their own expert to gather one piece of information on whatever the topic is, right? And so what do they do, Google Forms, is they'll just fill out a form. And you can go around, what's great about this, they can do it on their phones, because you are the coolest teacher ever, when you're like, get your phone out. Um, like, really, let's do it? Get my phone. Yeah, take your phone out. We're going to collect some information. Everyone fills in their part. And of course, that's going to uh, be collaborative. It's going to come together, and you can see this is a spreadsheet. Like what everybody, every student in the class contributes all comes to this collective spreadsheet. So now you've got this great spreadsheet of data. You've got it collaborative. Everyone's working together, putting in their part. But then what the heck do you do with that? So got my spreadsheet. Um, I'm going to skip that. When to get to the spreadsheet, just if you don't know, if you're not familiar with the new Google Forms, you do need to choose a response destination if you're not already there. Um, and then you'll have to tell it to go to the spreadsheet. So now you have that spreadsheet, what do you do with it? And how do you visualize it? How do you make sense of it? How do you get excited about it? And so I don't actually want you to fill out this form, but I do have the link to the, um, to the presentation. It's alicekeeler.com slash hbtechfest13. Uh, if you want to like play around with this, fill out the form, see like what the process is. So, but the form would look like this if you click on it. And so this is something that I had the students uh, fill out and gather the information. So they start by reading an article. So they're going to go find information. But then there's more questions that go along with this article than just this. So I'm saying, OK, this is uh, actually linked to a table of university acceptance rates and how many applications they get in and um, what percent they accept. So I have the students look that up. And then I have them go do a Google search, find the web page, have them look it up on an image search, finding different sources of information, and just put the URL to the image. Um, you can't really insert a, a picture into the Google form, but you can just link to the thing. And then I have them look up on Google Maps where the latitude and longitude is. And to be honest, totally superfluous. You don't need to do the latitude and longitude. Um, but I think it's a really great activity to have them just kind of go to Google Maps and grab it. It's actually pretty easy to do. Yeah, Alice, you created this table? Yeah. Yeah, it's just a Google Forms. So that's what's nice about Google Forms is obviously, you know, you guys have made them before. They're pretty simple to do. I can do them during passing period. I can make one up really quick. And then I have students inputting the data that I like. It all comes to a single spreadsheet that I can take a look at. Um, so if I go and I then pull up the fusion table that I made out of this, you know, there's the spreadsheet of data, and then there's the fusion table of data. So when I do the fusion table, this looks like a little bit nicer spreadsheet, right? You think, uh, you know, on a spreadsheet, my links probably be hyperlink too, but I love how the images are going to pop up in there. So as I ask students to go and find images and things that connect with the data, like what do you think goes along this with the part that you are responsible for, um, go find appropriate images for that, and it's all in here. Now, this is compiled from different students in the class. It wasn't just me giving them information, it was them going out and seeking it out. And so then we have this nice table, and I go, okay, that's nice. And it's Google, so of course they have the share button, so they can all collaborate on the same document together, just like you can with all the other Google Docs. But then, come here, go to the next one. Just kidding. Um, I go to these cards, and what was on the rows is now nicely arranged. And what's actually even cooler about that, I mean, it just does it automatically, by the way. I didn't have to actually do anything. I just said, make me a fusion table with my spreadsheet. And it goes, okay, I'll make you a fusion table. And what is the fusion table? I don't know. It's just like a bunch of like ways to look at my truck. This is all uh, customizable with HTML. And, and if you see this, there's a filter button. I can actually filter this. So I can filter it by student. I can filter it by college. I can filter it by state. And some of those different things. So that and I'm asking students to do is to analyze the information that they gather. 
that it's like, this is my part, so they have an ownership on it, like this is me, this is the rest of the class, how do we all fit together? So this is really a great activity to do. Um, you can visually see how it looks. But here's the coolest part that I think. It just magically makes a map. Where's my dots? Ah, oh, there. Now, this one only had a small data set in there, but it actually puts a dot automatically for you on the map for each one of them. And so you start to look for patterns and where clusters are and these kinds of things. You're like, well, that's really cool. But even better, when I click on one of those dots, come here, baby. It actually pops up that little index card for that piece of dot information. So what are we asking students to do? We're saying, okay, here's some just random facts. How are we going to make connections to it? How are we going to figure out where the patterns are? What critical thinking skills are you going to use for how it connects to other things? And, and instead of spending the time with the compasses and making the pie charts, and by the time they finish make graphing all their graphs, they forgot what the whole purpose was. Forget that. Let this do the work for them. We we want to focus on the critical thinking skills, not on the map making skills. So I already have the map. This it just magically does it. I didn't have to do anything. It just made. The thing about it, remember I told you that the latitude and longitude was superfluous, and the reason for that is because it's Google, and it had the list. It said like Harvard, Princeton, Amherst College. Like it knew those. It Google searched it for me, and it found where they all went with no address, no latitude, no longitude. It just finds it and searches it. So if there's information that Google can search, it'll just be able to map that for you without you having to put in that extra step. And then, I just love this, it just has all these different chart options that it will just make for you. So you can add charts so I can see how the different universities go in there. So now I'm asking the students, instead of making the chart, to analyze the chart. What does this mean? How can I use it? And I don't know you, you, but I think this is super exciting, is I can actually publish. If I click on the little arrow on the tab, it says I can publish this. I can publish just this chart. So I'm asking my students now to become publishers of their information. What did you find? How are you going to display it? How are you going to include it in the web page? Um, Jim Sell, I heard him one time say, you know, he's a video teacher. You guys know Jim Sell? Super amazing. It's your cell.com. Um, you know, the kids will come in and they turn in a video and he's like, that's great, now let's put it on YouTube. And they're like, oh, we're going to put it on YouTube. Well, let me go back and fix this a little more. And so when you're asking students to take what they're doing and you give them a public audience, they're going to take it a little bit more seriously and do a little bit higher quality job. So I love that with any one of these tabs, the map, the charts, anything, I can publish it. So whatever the student information is, and that, you know, as I update this, it would be, the publishing will be updated, but that gives the student a public voice and a purpose for doing that. And again, it is the ability to be collaborative, and then you notice on every one of these tabs is the ability to filter, right? So I'm able to do it by student, by university, by whatever, that I can publish it separately. Let me go back to the... Come here. And there. Um, yes. Sorry, how do you even get to it? Oh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm building up. I'm like, I want you to want it. Like, yeah, I want it. I want it. How can I do this? How can I look magical? So we're going to, you know, visualizing our data is with a fusion table. So I just showed you, right? It looks like that, and I can make maps. I put these screenshots in there just in case the internet wouldn't work. Um, one of them I did is I had the kids input the QR code that goes with it because it, it magically makes the, the card, right? And so if I, this particular one, I was just publishing events at the school so that they would add that to the Google form, what the different events are, with the, the link to the QR code images, and then you filter it by current events, so that, you know, with the dates. It's not showing all of the old ones, and there's not really any effort to go through and update it. It'll do that for you automatically. Uh, making the connections, looking at survey data, it will summarize, like, how many 11th graders, how many 10th graders answered, uh, males and females. I mean, how much effort do you have to put into that for doing it on a, on a spreadsheet or whatever? This is just like, it just does it. Like, hey, you want this, you got it. Um, I just love these network tables. They're kind of cool. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, so the way that you do it, so here you go, right? Mm -hmm. You have to go to your Google Drive. Okay, so you go to drive.google.com, and it will not be there. Now I have all these, like, extra ones because I'm a nerd. Um, it usually just has these. And then at the bottom it says connect more apps. So this is a one-time deal. Uh, you'll never have to do it again, no matter what computer you're using. You only have to do it once. Um, you're going to connect maps. We're going to put that in there. 
here's the, the hiccup, is if you would like to do this with your Google Apps domain with your school, uh, the administrator has to enable it. It is not enabled by default. And then there's like a second level of it that you have to get a double approval on to actually, uh, I don't know, I wasn't using the Google Apps domain, but... We, we, yeah, we, we, we've done it. <laughs> Yeah, okay, good. I don't so you're all actually, I never heard that on the second level, though. Okay. So you have to like, ask permission and wait a week. The, the, the IT administrator, the Google Apps administrator, has to like give you the whole hookup. So I just use my regular Gmail account. I have full access to it. But obviously, if our students have Google Apps, we need to put some peer pressure on who the, who the powers of being like, no, seriously, I need this. Yes. Um, no, no, it's already, we did it two weeks ago, so. <laughs> no, you will find it, Chris. For those of us who are watching us on, if it's not active, on the it's Hangout, uh, if your IT guy has not enabled it, and then you tell him, no, like, seriously, this is super educational, and we want this. How Google doesn't think that we don't just want it anyway. It is in beta, so be aware of that. So anyway, you would connect it, you'd find Fusion Tables, usually you can find it right away, or just type a search. Give me Fusion Tables. And so once you had done that, it'll save Fusion Tables and it'll be there forever. So it's really just a one-time thing that you can work out with your students. You're not really, and it really doesn't take that long, uh, not having to waste a lot of time with them. So then the next time you want to do, go to Google Docs. Instead of creating a spreadsheet, although, of course, we're going to create spreadsheets, but instead we're going to create a Fusion Table. Just like you would create a spreadsheet, just like you create a document. And it gives you this lovely menu of options. So, um, if you've never done it before, it does let you play with just a data set, just so you can kind of see what it looks like and how it goes. But, see, I can just link this here to a Google spreadsheet. Sure, I can put a Excel spreadsheet in there, too, but I know where I get all my data is I use a Google form, and I have that Google form go to a spreadsheet. I just spent, like, days falling down a rabbit hole. I'm like, I wonder what happens. If I take this Google Form spreadsheet that I did with my students and what it looks like when I visualize it, because it just doesn't look magic, right? So this is a rabbit hole you can fall down and just go Google Spreadsheets and go to the forms you already have and just take a look and see what kind of patterns emerge. Um, so I have a Google Fusion table sample, a couple of them for you to look at. We already looked at one. But my other student project on this, like, that's great, Alice. I don't have time to make a, a form, have the students gather and locate data. We're trying to, like, get moving here. I got, like, a 20 minute lesson, and then they got to take a test or whatever, whatever. There's a rally today. So, what I really want the students to do is to get that information, just get it. I don't want to waste time gathering it. Of course, you want to waste time gathering it. That's, that's project one. Project two, where can I get it? So, you can just look at public data. If you've ever done a Google search to try and find this information, it can be overwhelming. It's all mixed in with this other gobbledygook of things that don't give you direct information you want. But when you go to drive.google.com and then you create a fusion table instead of creating a, a different type of Google document, um, you can actually just look for, you can search, there's a search public data table. So I type in there texting while driving. And I look and I'm able, it pulls up all these websites that have data on them. So it's only searching websites that have public data. So it's searching census data, it's searching different county data, it's searching international monetary fund data, and just all of these data sets, you just will blow your mind how many of them are free and available just out there on Google. But when you get a ginormous data set that you've got on Google, what the heck do you do with that, and how do you have a student like, make that really manageable for them? What the heck with that? This is just it's, it's, I'm telling you, it's like magic. So, from here. So I do the search, and it gives me some options, and it says here I've got 17 rows of data it's showing me information about, in this case, KC results. And so you'll see it has this option, if you look carefully, is that I can import data. So it's just gonna, it's gonna look like a Google search, but it's a really good Google search of only stuff that has data. So my students can just find it, they click import data. They don't ask me why, but it's like three steps. So I say import data. And then once it imports it, it actually does it really fast. Like, do you want to put this in a fusion table? Duh, of course I do. So you got to click on that, import to fusion tables. And then it says, would you like to see that table? Yes. Yes, I'd like to see the table. So there's three clicks to be able to get the data. But basically, let me summarize this for you. 
you do a Google search and then you look at it. So um, I'll pretend it's only two steps. So once you do that, it's just going to open up that fusion table like I showed you with the spreadsheet. Something to be aware of is on the tab is you might have to um, change some of the, the format. So it guesses what kind of data it is. So if it's a number, if it's a text field, if it's many, if it's an image URL, it, it, sometimes the column headers will mess that up. So because the column header is not a number, it thinks the whole thing is text. So I need to click change. And I would, oops, yes, too many arrows here. And so I would change it. Like my acceptance number came in actually as text. I had to switch it to number, right? So as you look at the data set, you're like, hey, I thought this was going to show me pictures. Yeah, I don't show you pictures. You might just have to format the column. But other than that, it'll just do it. All right. And then for the picture one, I have the URL to the image. But I like to choose a four-line image. So a four-line image means it takes up four rows of height. So if you do a single-line image, that picture is really tiny. Um, so these are just the, you can have look at just as a hyperlink, or you can have it actually view as an image. And again, that's a one-time thing. If you import more data into it, the, the column itself is formatted. Yes. Do it. It felt like a good idea to have all these arrows at the time. Yeah. When you're searching the um, drive, the Google Drive.com, can you also search uh, domains and like like if I just want to search California Department of Ed, can I put that in well, the search? I mean, the Google search right. is basically what you're doing. It's just doing like when you go to images.google.com, it searches <laughs> images. Right. So now when I'm doing this through this public data search, it's a Google search, right. but it's searching sites right. that have data on them. So I would imagine all of your Boolean. Right search terms and all that kind of stuff that you normally can do, or your URL, colon. Because I've been a WASP coordinator twice, and this would be unbelievable. You have no you idea how great this, this would be for WASP. Into like fusion tables, like it would just be You show this amazing. to the WASP committee, they'll just yeah. like, think that you're magical, and you yeah. laugh because it took you five minutes. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you are on the map one, because it just, it just looks at your information and goes, you know what, you would like a map of this. Just mix it for you. So I always like that. Um, so again, if you get this little, on each of the tabs, there's a little arrow to click down. It gives you menu of options. Um, change the info window layout. This is the info window right there so that you can change the way that it looks. So when you go to the info window layout, it has the automatic, it goes to the custom. So if you're not afraid of a little bit of HTML, throw in a H1 header in there and put in the school logo, maybe the kid's picture of whoever um, found the doing the project. Totally customizable down to the HTML level, so it'll look exactly the way the kid wants to do it. And what a powerful and good reason to teach them a little bit of, we'll get them into coding just a little bit. HTML is pretty easy. There's about five basic tags. If you learn those, you're like master of the universe. And then, of course, is the option to publish. So whatever that they've created, they can then publish that. And then my, of course, favorite is to have them uh, write about it. But then there's also the option to embed. So I get that embed code. So if you're like me, I have them keep a digital portfolio on the website of all of their work and the things they do. And then I love I'm not a math teacher, but I make them do a lot of writing. And so they're going to reflect and actually tell me what this stuff means. They didn't spend the time making the graph. So if you're not going to spend the time making the graph, then I want you to think about it. <laughs> Write it, make the connections, and do those critical thinking skills that we really want students to do. Yeah. Um, I, I noticed that the, the URL up there is very long, and as opposed to the ones you've been giving us, which are yeah, do you do .gl like yeah, or tiny uh, URL? So I might want to explain how you're doing that. I don't know. Okay. Um, well, separate from our talk is Google has horrendous URLs. They're horrendously long. You know. So if you go to goo.gl, you can copy and paste that super long URL, and it'll make it shorter. I also own alicekeeler.com, and so I'm able to like go alicekeeler.com slash hvtechfest13, and it actually links to the Google Doc with a super long URL. So um, tinyurl.com or bit.ly bit um, will also make you shorter URLs. So if you're not using that with your students, there's no hope for them to actually link to that. Um, my other piece of advice is your class website should be your universe. If I think it, if I breathe it, if I sit on it, if I sneeze it, 
I will put it on my website. And then I will be so unhelpful. Miss Keeler, I was absent. So special for you. <laughs> Did I miss anything? I don't even know what I had for breakfast. <sighs> Let's go look at your website. Oh, all right. Let's go look at my website. Like I will not tell them anything. I, won't, I, you know, I handed something out. I have attached it to my website. Lord, can I get the handout? Uh, sure. Where is it? I don't know. You just can get off your website. Perfect. Go for it. So um, I have some resources. It's just the Google support one, so you can go to the fusion tables. But it, I mean, it is really that easy. It makes it just makes sense. You just create the fusion table, and it's going to help you to do that. This is just a little introduction. I believe I'm done. Eleven fifty-five. So I hope it left you wanting some more. You can find me on Twitter at Alice Keeler. I have some cards. Um, so if you need some help with this, um, I would be happy to help you. Those fifty yeah. URL and Google are URL short terms. So if you just Google for your short terms, super useful on Twitter. Super useful everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of Twitter apps, a lot of Mac and short reports. Awesome. Thanks for coming. All right, I'm gonna end this broadcast.